Welcome back to a brand new episode of Mastering Programming. In today's episode, we're going to be creating a QR code generator in Wix using Velo. Now, as you can see here, I've got this default image, a button and an input. And basically, I can put any URL here or any text, actually. And all I need to do is once I click on generate, we are going to use Velo to generate a QR code that your users can then uh, install or scan. At the same time, we can just put anything else. So we can say something like, hello world, click generate. It will wait until it gets generated and then it will change the QR code for you. Now, obviously the best thing about this is that you can apply filters to this. You can drag it, you can resize it. You can do whatever you would like to do because it's just a normal image that you can design and change how you want. So let's say we wanted to not crop, but let's say we wanted to add a border or a color for example and let's preview this one and let's say I add anything else here and click on generate it's going to generate the QR code with that filter and you can actually use all these filters and all these photo editing tools using Velo as well because they already exist on Wix so this is just a quick QR code generator that you can that's very easy for you to also customize and change things in if you're interested into learning how to do this please make sure you watch this episode until the end and let's get started welcome back guys now as you can see i'm on my development website and i'm on a blank page in terms of code the only thing that i have here is just an image that we're going to be replacing with our qr code uh, an input so just a place where people can type in some text and base and that text will be converted to a QR code and the button that will finally trigger everything now the first thing that we're just gonna do is let's change this to say enter QR content and the best thing about this is that it will automatically change it from whether it's a string or a URL you don't need to adjust it and for the button let's just click on generate you are that should be enough we're not going to worry too much about the styling now after that in order for you to continue what you need to do is you need to head to packages and apps and over here where it says npm we're going to be adding a package called qr code to do this you can just hover over that button or the, if you have if you don't have anything installed you should be able to find this button so I'm just going to click on this and then I'll click on install npm package. We're going to go over here and type QR code. And you can see that it's the first one over here. And all you need to do is then just click on install or there should be another button here called install. And there's also more documentation that I would recommend you check out if you need further information. So now that we've got that installed, what we need to do is we need to click on public and back end. And we're going to be adding a, a back end file so i'm simply going to click on this and i'll click on new web module let's go ahead and give it a name so we can just call it code generator generator <laughs> and it's gonna open for us like this uh, i'm just gonna highlight everything and remove it and now what we need to do is let's just first add an input statement. I can probably zoom in a little bit to make it easier. So I'm just going to be putting input and we'll put star to get everything from that pack library that we're going to use. And I'll say as QR code from, and then we're going to be putting QR code, which is that package that we just installed. After that, we can create a function. So we can say export async function and you can call this function anything you want i'll simply just call it generate qr code and we're going to give it a parameter of text and the reason we do this is that every time we're going to call this function we're going to be passing in text and that could be a string or a url and that url will be converted into a qr code here let, we're, let's use a try statement and the reason for that is because this could throw potential errors so we just need to be ready so i'll say let qr is equal to await qr code dot to data url and then we're going to be passing text and the reason we're using await is because 
if we don't use it, we're automatically going to be moving to the next line. But once we put away, this means that this line will need to be fully executed in order to move to the next line, which is actually important in our case. Otherwise, we could return an empty QR code. Now that we've got this, it's complaining because we need to then handle the error. So we're simply just going to say catch and let's just print the error if we do have an error. Awesome. So we got this function and that's actually all we need to do in terms of this file. So now let's go back to the page, the pages code. So I'll click over here. And what we need to do is we need to import that file that we just created or that function that we just created. So I'm going to say import and then I'm going to use the name of the file, which is code generator. And I'm also going to use the name, which is this one of the function. So we can say import or we'll pass in the name of the actual function itself. And then I will say from back end and we call the file code generator, just like this. And in terms of you, in, in case you don't know, the reason I'm saying backend code generator is because basically it's in the folder called backend and then the file itself is called code generator. Awesome. So now what we can do is we can create a function and I'll simply say async function generate QR code, just like this. Over here, I'm going to be passing or adding a parameter called string QR code. Inside of here, all we need to do is we can just say let QR code data URL equal to await. And then we're going to use that function that we imported. So we'll say generate QR code. And we are going to be passing that string that the user will pass. And I think I did a spelling mistake here. So it's just like this. Let's zoom in a little bit, just like that. Awesome. After that, what we need to do is we actually need to assign the source of our image. So this is image one. That's why I'm putting image one. If you have multiple images, you just need to find out what ID they are and then pass it here. And to do that, you can simply just hover over it or click on it and you'll see that it is image one. Let's continue. So I'll say dot source is equal to this QR code data URL that we just created. So I'm just going to copy it to be safe. There we go. Perfect. Now just one final step. Um, nothing right now is triggering this. So let's hover over the button and let's delete that. So I just hovered over the button and I'm going to click on on click. And now inside of here, first let's create a constant or just create a variable so we can say QR string and we're just going to assign that whatever value is inside of here so we can say it's equal to input one dot value and then we're going to call that function and to do that we just type the name and we're going to be passing that string cool so let's run this and see and if it works, that means we're actually done for this tutorial. So the first thing that I'll do is I'm just going to put some random text and click on generate QR code. It could take a little bit and there we go. We've got the QR code generated of this random text. Now I can't show you what it's actually showing on my phone. So if you have your mobile phone, just scan it. And to show you, if I put a URL, so let's say youtube.com.au and click on generate it will change it to YouTube. And if you scan that, you should be able to go to YouTube. If I change this to tapaway.com.au, which is a good time to tell you that this is my website where you can uh, hire me or get in touch with me. Anyways, you can see that it does change to that correct QR code. And you can keep doing this as much as you can or as many times as you would like, and obviously explore designing it as well. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy this episode. I hope you learned a lot. If you have any requests or anything that you're confused about, please make sure you let me know in the comments. Thank you and see you in the next episode.